Can I get you to potentially spotlight my screen? Because it's harder to see. Um, there we go. Thank you. All right. Welcome, everyone. We're going to start standing up today. And hopefully everybody's doing well um, amidst all of the chaos right now and the protests and the turmoil. Um, hopefully today we can help ground and center ourselves back to a place of peace and inner knowing. So we're going to start with standing up and then just begin with simple mountain pose. So reaching our arms all the way overhead and beginning to ground down through our feet. I'm going to take my socks off here. And just starting to loose up, loosen up a little bit. You can start to sway from side to side if you want. We're going to start with just some breathing and moving into mountain, mountain pose. So take a nice deep breath, reaching those hands overhead. Feel the shoulders grounding you down. You kind of sway. But start to notice the toes gripping down into your mat. And let's, let's, uh, let's lift the heart. So we can begin to exhale and just gently bend forward at the hips. Move down, look forward, hold. Relaxing the neck. And bending the knees liberally here. You need to feel free to just allow the spine to kind of loosen up. And on your next inhale, coming into just a simple half lift, lifting the heart forward out of the lower back, sort of a 90 degree angle. And then slowly exhaling back down. Do that a few more times, moving with your breath. And exhaling. And into our half lift. If you'd like to, you can even bring the hands to time or sort of raise to palms facing down. Really squeezing the shoulder blades together, feeling the middle of your back strengthen here. And on our next exhale, we'll go ahead and float all the way down. Facing the long side of your mat now. Into downward facing dog. So feel free to step back at your own pace, letting those feet settle down one at a time. Really widening through the shoulder blades and lengthening the crown of the head all the way towards the hands. Pressing that heart a little farther down towards the neck. And then starting to inhale here on your next inhale, putting the weight forward to a plank. So noticing that your heart stays suspended between the shoulders. And we can lower our knees here first. Go ahead and float down to the belly. So just exhaling to bend those elbows back. And we'll inhale into cobra, beginning to warm up the spine. Exhaling, let's go ahead and press back to child pose. Moving through the hips, pressing the hips down into the heels. Fully exhaling. And inhaling forward back to our plank. If you'd like to, you can lift up to the knees or to the toes here. So just continuing with this, sort of down to the belly, up to cobra, and then back to child's pose. So exhaling forward. And sinking back to child's. This last time through, we might like to press all the way up 
as we go down through Chaturanga, pressing all the way this time up to Upward Facing Dog. And then bringing the hips back, either to Child's Pose, or you can step back to Downward Facing Dog. Go ahead and just walk the feet back forward, twisting hands. And then placing the hands on the knees or the thighs, you can roll back up to standing. And we'll take another mountain's pose here. Really lifting up the heart, feeling the feet grounding down. If you'd like to, you can bring the fingers together. I'm just going to adjust the camera here so that y'all can see my hands. Okay. So, bring those hands all the way and clasping them overhead to have a slight back bend here. Notice the shoulders dropping down and the navel pulling close to the spine. So let's just exhale and bring the arms down to either side. Let's start with a nice big shoulder roll as well. So taking some big shoulder rolls backwards, feeling that chest space. And then loosen up. I'm just trying to bring that mind back down into your heart today. Using that mind to guide with your heart. We can step our feet nice and wide and move through a few hip openers. Moving through our sunflowers, our arms reach up overhead. And as we exhale, we just hinge forward slightly. Knees are tracing towards the toes. Always see your toes. And then also we could alternate with our moon flowers, bringing those elbows in, building that strength from the core. a few more sunflowers. And let's go ahead and just pivot one foot, bring that ankle towards the outside of your mat, and then pivot the front foot to face the other way, so that we're coming into warrior one. So warrior one facing one way, Hips are squared towards the front of your mat. Arms to raise, but the shoulders are just sinking down into their sockets. And you feel our hip flexors stretching as we sink a little further into that 90 degree angle. Let's go ahead and come all the way down to a lunge. We're finding our first lunge today. We kind of roll forward and back. Let's we'll just go ahead and lift the hips, stepping back to downward facing dog. Now with the same foot that was in the back before, so continuing to lift that leg that was behind. Lifting that leg into full extension here. And exhaling, bringing it back forward so that we switch sides on our lunge. And here we are lunging on the other side. When you're ready, you can go ahead and plant the back heel so that we can lift up. I'm going to turn around so you can see. Where you're going on the other side. Breathing. Lifting that heart up out of the lower back, but keeping the shoulder blades down. Let's exhale from all the way back to our lunge. Stepping back to downward facing dog. And we'll lift the right leg out behind. And then gently come back to center. Put 
bend the weight forward to a plank again. We can begin to move to a side plank variation. So there's different ways to do our side plank. But noticing here how I have both legs extended, you can also lower the bottom knee. And just extend into our side plank. Lifting those hips up, keeping the shoulder right over the hand. If you want a little more challenge, you can try to lift the top leg. And slowly coming back around. Let's take a small break here. Just either going into downward dog or you can always go back to child pose. Breathing here and recentering. So I'm going to rotate to the other side so that you can see me. But if you're ready to so just move to the other arm, coming into side plank on the other side. Again, lifting those hips and stacking the shoulders. Maybe lifting the leg. And slowly we can come back around. We can lower the knees and just gently rest back. Sinking into child pose. Feeling the body. Fold and rest. Melting into the mat. So we can move forward again. But why don't we start a little bit more of the heart openers that I'd like to try. And I'm going to face sort of this way so you can see me. We're going to do a little bit more of a heart opener stretch where coming into all fours. Bring one arm up to the side about parallel with the mat. And we're going to bring that arm, threading the arm underneath the other arm. You don't have to move, thank you. <laughs> So we're lowering that shoulder. On the exhale, and then on the inhale, kind of wrapping the arm back around, reaching it towards the ceiling. So exhaling to fold and open the back of the heart, the heart space, feeling the ribs and the back body. And inhaling to reach. And when you're ready, feel free to switch to the other side. Move back to center and we'll just start to thread the needle. Fully exhaling, following the breath in, expanding to grow into that new space. Sinking a little deeper with each exhale. Coming back to center, we start to move into cat cow. So just opening up the spine a little bit more. Again, stacking our joints so that we're staying stable. Spreading those fingers nice and wide and also helping to grip down with the fingertips also really helps in any kind of um, inversion. If you uh, have inversions in your practice, 
really important to make sure you can grip down with the fingertips to help balance and steady that weight. So let's just begin the two cat cow flow. Exhaling, pressing the heart towards the ceiling. And then inhaling to drop the heart between the shoulders, reaching it forward. One inhale. Moving slowly through our cat cow, adding a little bit of spine variation as well. We can sort of start to notice in our bodies where we have more heat building. I think we probably open the arms a little bit. So let's continue to kind of build some heat here in the arms. And then maybe we can practice a few sort of preparatory poses to move towards inversions. But I will not be, uh, probably won't be asking anyone to do an inversion without me being there. So just know to always listen to your body. Let's go ahead and just lower down to the belly. Moving into upward facing dog on an inhale. And then exhaling. We come back to downward facing dog. So from here in downward facing dog, in order to kind of help get the feeling of coming up into an inversion, one of the easiest ways to kind of help feel that shift in the weight is to lower down to your elbows. And sometimes you can clasp the hands here in front. Sometimes it's more comfortable to just place the hands on the mat. But just slowly, slowly, maybe tiptoeing the feet a little closer and just noticing the weight shift into the shoulders. One of the first steps in inversions is being able to trust where the weight goes. So just sort of feeling that, you don't have to hold it here. This pose is called dolphin pose. It's essentially a downward dog, but from your elbows. And if you are able to kind of move into a headstand, there's no body stopping you. You can obviously try a headstand. But perhaps you might just like to feel what it feels like to shift the weight into the shoulders. Taking a break in child's pose when we need it. Maybe one more time, try to lift up into the shoulders. slowly kind of walk the hands into a kneeling position. Take a moment to help find a comfortable seat here. Why don't we just do a nice tricep um, stretch while we're here. So a couple ways that you can do it. If you have a belt or a strap or a towel you can help to extend the grip of your arm by holding a strap and helping to just help pull down the center of your back. Now there's also the option to just simply use your hands, maybe reaching those fingertips together. Or if you even if it's more comfortable, just gently press that elbow a little further back into the actual other arm. Gently pulling it deeper. 
And moving to the other side, you might like to use that strap. to our sit bones. Let's see what time it is. Okay, we've got nine minutes. Back on to our sit bones here. I'm just coming into a simple butterfly first. Widening those hips open, lifting the heart up out of the lower back. Bring the feet closer to the body. If you need a deeper stretch this morning, Maybe pressing those knees open to the side. So why don't we go ahead and take a staff pose here. Next pose we'll do is staff pose. Just finding our way to a comfortable place. Legs extended. Sitting up on the sit bones. And then again, if you have a strap, you can grab your strap and use that to help extend the length of the arms. But if you don't have a strap, you don't need one. You can also just take your arms overhead. Again, lifting up through the heart and then guiding with the heart. So letting that belly button and the chest sort of come forward. And when you find the place where you really can't push the torso forward without um, outside pressure, just lower the arms and focus on straightening the spine and breathing into the hamstrings. And we're just accepting wherever we're at today. So if we have our knees slightly bent today, that might be perfectly fine for some of us. And some of us, we might really like the feeling of having the knees pressing all the way down. Some people might be able to reach the toes. Some people might be able to put their head all the way down to the knees. So every day is a little different. But the key thing here is to just find where you feel the stretch and it's not too tense, it's not too um, pinching or in pain, it's not a sharp pain. We're just breathing through. So the next thing we'll do, coming back up out of staff pose, we can bring our right knee in towards our chest and lower the leg out to the side. Taking our forward fold again here, but just one legged forward fold. Again, guiding with the heart if you can and keeping the spine long. Coming forward into this one legged seated forward fold. And coming back out of that, we can rotate to the other side. Bring that left knee in, and lowering the knee out to the side. Make sure that both sit bones are still grounded. And then again, you want to kind of lift up the spine and lengthen it before we hinge forward. And Releasing any judgment, any negative self beliefs. 
feelings of being unworthy or whatever it might be. Just come back up out of that stretch. I'm trying to think what else would we like to do. Yeah, I think maybe a plow pose would be good. So if you'd like to roll back onto your back, on your spine, and just start with bringing the knees to the chest and just feel the lower back rocking forward and back. Just gently moving. Maybe from side to side. Now to move into plow pose, this is one that if you know you have um, neck injuries or um, neck disc issues, you might not want to do this pose. So knowing your body and another key thing here in plow pose is not to move your head. Try to keep your head as straight as possible. Now the only thing that we need to do really is to make sure that the hands are going to be able to support the hips. So essentially, what we can do is start with bridge pose, kind of one off the lower back, placing those feet right under the uh, knees. So preparing for plow, warming up the spine here. One vertebrae at a time, we're going to start to draw the spine up grounding down through the heels, and then just lowering down one vertebrae at a time. You might even like to rock the hips all the way forward to where the, arc, the back arches a little bit. And really feel the length of the spine on the floor. Now if you want to try plow, again, totally optional, probably preferred if it's in your practice already. Essentially, we're just going to bring the legs over the head to the point where you can place the hands on the flat part of your hips and a little bit above, kind of at the lower back. So plow pose could just be a shoulder stand. We could just lift the legs up. Maybe just one leg at a time and lift up. But again, avoiding that turning of the head and just focusing on your breath. Focusing on the core strength. And if you would like to just move gently and slowly, bring those legs all the way overhead into plow. You might feel a toe or a foot touch down, and you might not, and that's fine. So just being very gentle. And to roll out of plow, just gently release, releasing the hands and lowering the spine back down. Come to balancing that. That rounding of the spine. You can just feel the hips rolling forward and back using some tip, tilting of the hips. And now extending both legs down. I'm sorry, let's just extend one leg down. <laughs> and we'll bring one leg forward to the, the hands, bringing that knee in towards the chest. We can start by rotating that knee either out to the side, rotating it around in its socket. 
And then maybe just draw in that knee all the way across into a supine spinal twist. Both shoulders are grounded. Relaxing into the pose. Right knee up towards the chest. Maybe rolling it out to the side, opening the hips a little more. And then rotating it across the body. center. We'll gently allow either allowing the feet to rest open on either side in corpse pose. Or you can also just bring the knees to lean in against one another here. Placing the hands either on the side of the mat or you can place a hand on your heart or on your sacral chakra. Noticing the energy, noticing the breath, noticing your power and your vitality. Being fully present in our bodies in this moment. Acknowledging that what we focus on grows. Resting assured that what we can dream up for ourselves, we are worth it. We are worth what we desire in life. If you'd like to, you can go ahead and begin to roll the body back up. Maybe just using the legs to help roll you back up to a seated position. You can also just gently press up to a seated position. But taking the last about a few moments, really just tune into what it is that your heart needs today. Placing a hand on our heart, and then both hands, feeling your heartbeat. Feeling how it's seated in our heart, whether our heart feels sore, vulnerable, closed off, open, scared, it could be anything, but just sending that love and comfort to your heart space. Acknowledging your own purpose. In life. Namaste.